we love you and thank you so very much. Thank you for this day. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you that we get to be here today, today and that we get to be here with each other and that we get to be here with you. Please help us to get some truth from your word today, Father. Help us get some understanding so that we may be able to serve you even better and that we can love you better and love others the way that we're supposed to. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> PowerPoints? Okay. <clears throat> today we're talking about the divine response. As I kind of already mentioned today, uh, before communion, I was not acting in the divine response. It's easy to respond in the flesh, but we need to be like God and respond the way He would. There is often a knee-jerk reaction that takes place when something happens to us. And our flesh wants to take over, whether that be with physical or emotional abuse. You know, also the other day, uh, somebody said something to me that was completely unjust. And my initial thought was, I'm fixing to tell them off. And I had everything lined up I wanted to say to them of how they're wrong and why they're wrong. And they shouldn't have said that to me and everything I've done for them. And what, what are they, who do they think they are, they're going to say that to me. But thankfully, God gave me some... Usa, usa. <laughs> gave me some uh, some reflection time. He gave me some meditation time, some prayer time before I actually responded, because I would have not kept that relationship intact if I would have responded that way. He calmed me down, and I was even the one to apologize, even though I didn't think that what I did was wrong. I apologized anyway to keep that relationship because that matters more than that little instance yes. of negativity that they did to me. You know, but to calm the situation down, I became the peacemaker. And that is what God has called all of us to do, is be peacemakers. Even if you don't think you were wrong in any instance, doesn't matter. Be the peacemaker. Because God knows. He knows the situation. He knows if what they did to you was wrong. He knows. But how are we going to react? How will we be in that situation? Thankfully, I did not respond in the flesh, although my knee-jerk reaction wanted to. And if it would have been in person and would have been a verbal conversation, I may have responded completely differently. But thankfully it happened over text and I was able to say, I need to take a breather before I respond. <laughs> right. Because usually we act in the most the flesh in that few minutes of time whenever your anger and everything is boiled up to its most. That's usually when the devil can get us to fall into that trap. Amen. But... What we need to do is take some time away. Yes. Even if in you're in a heated argument, let's just say an, an argument just springs itself upon you, you don't have to continue in that argument. Even though you may want to. Even if you got some zingers. <laughs> even if you know if you say this one thing, you got them. Walk away. <laughs> Because it's better to maintain that relationship than to throw a zinger out there or darts or try to hurt that person. Right? I see a lot of smiles out there. That must happen to y'all often, right? That's this, this must be speaking to somebody, i got to say. Because I knew that this sermon was going to because when God gave it to me, I was like, I know that this is going to be for some reason. And then it hit home with me, so I know it's going to be hitting home with some of y'all out there. Let's go ahead and get into the Scriptures. Romans 11, 1 through 10. It's kind of long, but y'all bear with me, alright? I say then, has God cast away His people? Certainly not. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. 
God has not cast away His people whom He foreknew. Or do you not know what the Scripture says of Elijah? How he pleads with God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars, and I alone am left, and they seek my life. But what does the divine response say to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Even so then, at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no longer of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. But if it is of works, it is no longer grace. Otherwise, work is no longer work. What then? Israel has not obtained what it seeks, but the elect have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Just as it is written, God has given them a spirit of stupor, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, to this very day. And David says, Let their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block and a recompense to them. Let their eyes be darkened so that they do not see and bow down their back always. So let me point out the part here about the divine response. See, you have Elijah over here, and he's thinking, I'm the only righteous guy in this whole place. I'm the one that's righteous. I'm the one that's serving you. But all these people out here, they aren't. You need to wipe them out. You need to take care of them. You need to punish them. And God says, hold on a second there, Elijah. The divine response is, I have mercy on my people. I have grace for them. And I have reserved 7,000 people who have not bowed to Baal. Now they may have messed up. They have made mistakes. Just like all of us, right? right. All of us, we all mess up. Yeah, but we don't worship no other gods, do we? That, no. Our commitment is to the Lord. Even if we mess up, even in my worst, even the worst that I've ever been, I never followed after anything other than God. Amen. Amen. And that was at my worst. Now, I did do a lot of things that were wrong. And in my actions, I wasn't proven to Him that I was following Him. But if you ask me who I believed in, it was God, number one. It was Jesus Christ. And that might be the same scenario that we're looking at right here. Elijah's looking at all these people who are doing things that are sinful and wrong. And he's saying, God, take care of them. Punish them. Get rid of them. And God's saying, look, Elijah, I see everything. You only see with your natural eyes. But I see everything. I know if that person right down the road that's sinning is going to turn their life around in two years. And they're going to start getting right with God. And they're going to make their best effort to serve me. Because they ain't ever served nobody else. And I'm going to tell you right now, that's what God did with me. If, God, if, if somebody would have came to God and said, Hey, look at that Brandon. He ain't serving you. He's sinning. Look at all that sin he's doing. But God saw. Hey, yeah, but not much longer from now. He's going to do a 180. And He's going to be right on the right path. And He's going to serve me the best that He possibly can. He may still make mistakes. He may still get in His flesh every now and then. But He's going to be falling after me as best as He possibly can. And there might be some people out there trying to say evil against you as well. But God knows. God knows the truth. He knows if you're really serving Him. He knows if you really love Him. And He will help you get on the right path. I guarantee you. Yeah. Romans 11, 33-36 Oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out. Basically, He's, just, he's so awesome that we can't even figure out all of His ways. He's so awesome and His ways are so much higher than ours. 
For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has become His counselor? Or who has first given to Him, and it shall be repaid to Him? For of Him, through Him, and to Him are all things, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. His ways are past finding out. Meaning, it's going to be hard for us to figure out God. Because His ways are higher than our ways. But the divine response doesn't always make sense to the world or the flesh. Isaiah 55, 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isn't that right? Yes. Sometimes we just get some stupid thoughts in our head, don't we? Yeah. And we think we know it all, don't we, all the time. We just think we got it all figured out. But God's ways are higher than our ways. And even if we think a certain situation is past, far gone, God knows the eternal outcome of everything. He knows. There may be somebody right now that you can say, they're never going to serve God. Look at what they're doing. They ain't ever going to get on the right path. But God knows. He sees more clearly than you ever will. And all you see is what they've done, but you don't know what they will do. And God can change anybody if they're willing. If they're willing, God will change them and get them doing a whole completely different thing. And your view that needs to match God's view. You need to have the concept in your mind that God can do anything. So this person is not too far gone. So therefore, I need to reach out to them and share with them the truth and the gospel and pray for them. Right? Don't look at nobody as a lost cause. And I'm going to even say, even devil worshipers, don't look at them as they'll never get right with God because you never know what God can do. You never know if God can change that person or not. Because I believe He can get anybody. If it's possible, God's going to find a way. Right? Now, of course, there's people that just will never change. But that's not up to us to decide or figure out on our own. We're to look at every person as a chance and person that can get into heaven. Somebody that can go to an eternity of heaven and be in with God. So we see that God's ways are higher than our ways. And we see this even further when Jesus stumps the Pharisees with His response. Now, I just love when Jesus talks to the Pharisees. It is just one of my greatest joys that I get to see when I'm reading the Bible because He is just, He is always stumping them. And it is just so fun to watch and see as it plays out. But I just pinpointed one of the scenarios and I want you to uh, bear with me because this one's kind of long but it's a good little story here. So then the Pharisees went and plotted how they might entangle him in his talk. So they're plotting already. They're trying to figure out. So there's, I can just see them all sitting around in a group of them. They're about maybe 20 guys. All right, come on, guys, let's brainstorm here. How are we going to stomp Jesus today? So they're coming up with their best material. I mean, this is their choicest things here. This is a good one, guys. Let's go get him with this today. So they're excited about it. They got this good one. They're about to get Jesus. And and they sent to Him their disciples with the Herodians saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God and truth. Nor do you care about anyone for you do not regard the person of men. See, they're trying to set Him up already with how they're talking to Him. Tell us, therefore, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? See, they're trying to get him to say, no, you don't have to pay taxes. But Jesus perceived their wickedness. He already knew what they were doing. And he said, why do you test me? You hypocrites. Show me the tax money. So they brought him a denarius. It's like maybe just showing him a dollar bill or something like now in today's time. 
And he said to them, Whose image and inscription is this? He already knew. They said to him, Caesar's. And he said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. So he said, Hey, if that's Caesar's inscription, you need to give it back to him because that's his. <laughs> when they heard these words, they marveled. And they left him and went their way. So not only did he prove them wrong, but he made them marvel at like, golly, man, we were sitting there trying to figure this out all day long. And he just threw this out at us. And now we don't, I don't even know if we can stump this guy. Look at it. That's how I'd be thinking if I was trying to get somebody and they just came back at me with something like that. Blow my mind. I'd say, guys, we need to leave this dude alone because he's got it together. But then even further, we see that God's ways are higher than our ways by how He wants us to respond to certain situations. Now, whenever I read these things, they're going to be hard. They're going to be things that go against your natural thought processes. They're going to go against maybe things that you were taught. They're going to go against how you may have normally dealt with these scenarios. But I want you to try to train your mind into thinking the ways of God instead of the ways of the flesh and the world. And see if you can make a change in your own life. Let's go to Matthew 5, 38-48. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. We've all heard eye for an eye before, haven't we? Oh, yeah. Tooth for tooth, I don't know, that one sounds a little different, but eye for an eye, we all know that one. But I tell you not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on, the, on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. Whew. That's a hard one, isn't it? I have to ask for forgiveness. Yeah. A lot of people ain't going to let that one slide, right? But that's what, G, that's what the divine response is. Right. Yep. Yep. If somebody slaps you on the cheek, he says, turn the other side. Yep. Now, some people will try to wiggle out of this. I think we lost audio here, but that's all right. I'll just talk louder. Some people try to wiggle out of this and say, well, maybe that's just a metaphor for, you know, just other things, but not literal. I think he's being literal and also other things. Yeah. <laughs> See, already, we're, it's a struggle, isn't it? Sure is. I'm going to tell you this. This is probably one of the hardest ones I would deal with. Because if you ever even got a slap on me, you sure wasn't walking away from the situation. <laughs> Not that anybody has. Because to this day, nobody's ever actually landed a punch on me in a fight when it was me one-on-one -on -one with somebody. Because I'm just, I'm like a ninja, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, so that's even, I want you to get in the mindset of me, okay? I want you to get in the mindset of me. I'm not bragging about being a good fighter or anything. But I want you to realize that it don't matter who you are and how big and bad you think you are. There is somebody else that's better than you. Yeah. But what matters, what matters, if you had somebody come up and slap you in the face, most people, that's automatic fight, right? Yeah. Automatic fight. But what if you turned your other cheek and you said, go ahead? <laughs> What would, what would that do to somebody's mind? Wouldn't it blow it up? Wouldn't it just blow them up? What just happened? I thought I was about to get a fight here, and this guy's turned his other cheek. And you say, man, I don't want to fight you because I serve God. Well, what if he thinks he's already serving God and he just punched you? What's that going to make him do with his thought processes? Because there's a lot of people out there who think they're serving God, but they really ain't. Right? They think they're a Christian, but they don't live a Christian lifestyle. What if you turned your other cheek and you said, I love you, I'm going to pray for you. Whew. That's hard, isn't it? I would. But that's the divine response. Let me ask you a question. Do you think Jesus was ever slapped in the face? 
problem. Yeah, he was. Did he get in a double throwdown and start fighting somebody? No, he didn't. You know what he did? He said, why did you hit me? Have I done you wrong? Why did you hit me? He asked him a question. Maybe you could ask him a question as well. Now, after the second hit, I'm not telling you to keep letting them hit you, all right? But there's also common sense. I think you could run away, you know, or so. There's all kinds of different ways you can get out of fighting. All right? But don't look at, oh, well, they hit me. Now I can get on it, you know. Now I can start fighting them, you know. Women out there, y'all, yeah. how's he on this, you know? <laughs> y'all don't have to deal with that kind of thing. But guys, it's a little different, right? <laughs> little different. <clears throat> Nevertheless, the divine response is he would rather us walk away. He would rather us turn the other cheek. He would rather us pray for them instead of fighting. Right? Now that's going to be one of those case by case basis. So take it for what it is. But nevertheless, the divine response is saying turn the other cheek. Now if anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. What? If somebody's suing me, you're telling me to give them more? What? This doesn't compute in my rational brain right now, right? But God isn't asking us to think rational. He's asking us to think with the divine response. He's, act, he's asking us to act in the way that God wants us to act. Now, when you do these things, this causes somebody to think beyond their circumstance. So let's just say for an example, somebody sued you for... $100. And after you gave them the $100, y'all went to court and everything, and you paid your $100, and you say, you know what? I feel like God wants me to give you a little extra. And you gave them another 50. What would that do to their mindset? They just took you to court and sued you and won. So they're thinking, yes, I got my money out of them. And then you say, here you go, here's another 50. God bless you, I love you. Whew. Now they're thinking about God, aren't they? They're not thinking about how they just took you over or how they just won. They're thinking, this person gave me more than they needed to. They didn't have to do that. You see, these are scenarios and opportunities God is opening up. Now these, like I said, this is going to make you question everything you think right now. And this is going to be hard for some of us to do and actually act upon. But nevertheless, He put it in this Bible for us to read and do, didn't He? He didn't put it in there for just us to read over and say, well, that's an interesting concept. Well, that's for somebody else. <laughs> no. He, he, he gave it to us for us to enact it in our own lives so that we truly could be the salt of the earth. Salt and light of the earth. So that we could change the darkness. Guess what? That extra $50 you gave that person, that might make, might make them decide to give you that $100 back in the 50 and say, you know what, I shouldn't have sued you in the first place. I'm sorry. I was just mad. I was just acting in my flesh. Please forgive me. Here, take this money back. It might get them to question their own actions. And that's what God might be trying to do. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Anybody ever ask you to do something? You do that, and then you also say, well, hey, how about I do this too while I'm here? Somebody might ask you to come over and help, help them around the house. You know, they're maybe getting down in their back or down in their knees like me. Hey, can you help me with this? And you go over and help them. Then you say, hey, well, I noticed that this needs to be taken care of too. Can I do that for you? That's the response that we need to have. Right? Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. You have heard that it was said, 
You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. How many out there right now love your enemies? Do you have any enemies out there? Yeah. Do you? Do you love them? Yes. I you need to. That's what the Bible says. That's hard though, isn't it? But they did me so wrong. I'm just in not loving them because they have hurt me. They've hurt my family. I'm right in not loving that person. But that's not what God wants from us. He calls us to love our enemies. What a hard concept, right? And even further, He says, Bless those who curse you. Bless them. What are you talking about, God? Are you crazy? They just cussed me out. They're doing me wrong. Why are you asking me to bless them? They need to be punished. Right? That's our attitude, isn't it? That's Elijah's attitude. That was Jonah's attitude. There's a lot of people in the Bible who are like, man, God, you need to smite them. Smite them. Destroy them. Wipe them off the map. They're doing us wrong. And God says, no. Be long-suffering. Pray for them. You don't know what they're dealing with. You don't know the struggles they have in their life. Pray for that person. Bless them. They just might change. Because that's the ultimate goal is that that person might change and become saved. Right? Amen. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Are you praying for those who are using you right now? What about if they're persecuting you? Are you praying for them? That's what Jesus wants us to do. It, it's hard though, isn't it? It's hard in our minds. We're like, no, but this is how I've always done things and this is how I see other people doing things and this is... This is what I'm rationalizing, being this way towards them. Not that way, God. That's too weird. It's too hard of a concept. Pray for those who are doing me wrong? Maybe I'll pray for a boulder to fall on their head, but that's about all I can muster. Right? No, he's saying pray pray for their good. Pray for, for their well-being. Now, I won't pray for their riches. God, make them rich or anything, but... Pray for them, nevertheless. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For He makes His Son rise on the evil and on the good and send rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father is in heaven is perfect. You know, we can act the way that God would want us to. But we have to make it up in our minds that I'm going to be like Jesus. Right? Anybody ever heard that phrase, what would Jesus do? That's something that I like to remember and keep in my life. And I want you to remind yourselves of that very thing. God wants you to be reminded of that. What would Jesus do in this situation? How would He react? Now there is righteous anger. And He has gotten angry and said and done some things that we get kind of cockeyed about. Like, whoa, did He really just do that? But He did everything with an intent and a purpose. And He never acted in His flesh. But we need to follow after His example. 1 Corinthians 6, 1-7 through Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unrighteous and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Do you not know that, that we shall judge angels? How much more 
things that pertain to this life. If then you have judgments concerning these things pertaining to this life, do you appoint those who are least esteemed by the church to judge? I say this to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you, not even one who will be able to judge between his brethren? But brother goes to law against brother, and that before unbelievers. Taking Christians to court against each other to be judged by unbelievers is what's happening. That's what he's talking about. He's saying, y'all can't figure this out amongst yourselves. You can't bring it between some Christian brother y'all both respect and get his ruling on the matter. Y'all can't judge for yourselves. And he's saying, I speak this to your shame that you can't do it. But brother goes to law against brother and that before unbelievers. Now therefore, it is already an utter failure for you that you go to law against one another. Why do you not rather accept wrong? Why do you not rather let yourselves be cheated? Man, <laughs> he is asking a lot from us, isn't he? You would rather me be cheated? You'd rather me go on suffering the wrong that they did to me? Gosh. Now, I'm not saying you can't ever sue. Now, I think there's situations where you can sue entities or corporations or things like that. But I think when it comes between a matter of individuals, I think God would rather us suffer wrong. That's what He says anyways. That's what He says in the Scripture. Now, you can do however you want to do, but He's asking some hard things from us sometimes. We can either push it aside and say, well, that's for somebody else, or I'm not there yet, or whatever. Come up with your own justifications, because we always do. Our own justifications about things and reasons why we do the things we do. Or, do you want to go with the divine response and fall after Jesus' example and what the Bible tells you to do? We all have a choice. And a lot of times, these choices that we have to make are hard. Sometimes it's a complete change of mindset. Sometimes it's a complete change of lifestyle. But nevertheless, your reward will be great in heaven. Amen. Do you want that little bit of sue that you can get here on earth? Or do you, would you rather suffer wrong and get treasures in heaven for all eternity? Man, I don't know. I think I want to go with the Bible. Now, that's what God's best is for us. Now, we're going to make a mistake every now and then. We're going to do things that aren't God's best. And I'm not trying to hamper down on if you've ever done this before and say you're wrong and you're a sinner. I'm just saying that God gives us the best and then He says this is what's not. Right? right. This is what I want you to do and this is what I don't want you to do. I personally want to try my best to go with what He wants us to do. Even the hard stuff. And you know that, going back to that slapping thing, I've wrestled with that in my mind so much. Would I really turn the other cheek? Because I'm the kind of guy that the slightest bit of pain increases my adrenaline levels. Then when that happens, my anger increases. And, and not fighting is almost out of the concept of realm of possibilities. It just seems like that's the inevitable response. Nevertheless, I've prayed for that situation never to happen. Yeah. But I've also prayed that if it is ever thrust upon me, that God helps me to act the way that He would want me to. Amen. Now, like I said, this is hard. <laughs> this is a hard thing. But look at how Jesus dealt with it. Right. He had people throwing stuff at Him spitting at him, punching him in the face, pulling out his hair out of his beard. My son did that to me the other day, and man, it hurts. He grabbed a hold and he just pulled, and it hurts. He had people mocking him and cussing at him, you know, and whipping him. And he never 
did anything back to them. Never cussed at them. Never tried slapping them away. Never spit back at them. He never mocked them. He didn't do that. He acted in the right way. And He did that for our sakes. And he, everything He did was an example for us to implement in our lives. Now y'all say, well, Jesus was perfect. Jesus was the Son of God. I can't do that. You can. You just have to get past it up here. You just have to rationalize it in your mind that I'm not going to act in my flesh. I'm going to act with the divine response. Right? Two more scriptures and then we'll close. Newcomers are saying, yes, man, this guy was long-winded. <laughs> Sorry, I have to tell it to you. I have to give it to you the way he gives it to me. Finally, a pure example. Luke 23, 33-34. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified Him and the criminals, one on the right hand and one on the left. And then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And then they divided His garments and cast lots for Him. Nevertheless, Jesus was up on the cross put there by people He came to save, put there unjustly, put there by false witnesses and false accusations, put there by scared men who didn't want to lose their power, put there by people who hit Him, spit on Him, cussed at Him, were dividing up His clothes right there in front of Him, doing all these things, and He's up there on that cross dying for them and praying for them. And y'all say, well, that was just for that perfect man. I couldn't do that. Well, let's see if anybody ever followed that example. Acts 7, 59-60 And then they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. He died. Y'all say it's just for a perfect man? I tell you, it's for all of us. God tells you it's for all of us. If Stephen saw what Jesus did, he heard about it, he said, what? Jesus prayed for, for those people that hurt him? I'm going to do that too. He was the first martyr. He was our realistic example, if you will. Provided a better term. He was somebody closer to us in, in actions, right? He was a guy who may have made a lot of mistakes. We don't really know a lot about Stephen, but I look at him as just another man in a sea of men who probably made a lot of mistakes in his life and just said, man, that Jesus guy, i got to get a hold of him. I need him in my life. And I relate to that. But I see his example after Jesus' example and I say, if Stephen could do it, I could do it. Right? Amen. Even if it's hard. Even if it's a struggle. Even if you don't get it right the first time. Then you say, God, I messed up. I got in my flesh. I sinned. But I want to do what's right. I want that divine response. I want to follow Jesus' example. I want to do the right thing. I'm tired of doing the wrong thing. Right? Yeah. Anybody out there just tired of doing the wrong thing? Yeah. Well, you're in a good spot. That's how you know you're saved. If you can't stand to mess up and sin, that's called conviction. Yep. Thank you, Lord, for it, right? Amen. Yep. So as we play this next song, I want you to be thinking about how you can respond differently. When those situations come against you, because the devil's going to send them. Oh, yeah. oh, he's coming. 
He's going to send them against you. He's going to try to get you to mess up. He's going to try to get you to fail. He's going to try to get you to act in the flesh. But if we hit Him back with that divine response, we hit Him back with the way God tells us to do things, He's going to be just like them Pharisees. Astonished. (laughs) Bewildered. Can't believe that they did that. I just knew they were going to mess up. I just set up all, I set it up from the beginning. I set it up all day. I was putting all that scenario together. I just knew they were going to fail. But they didn't. See, that's what I want. I want to get the devil walking away and scratching his head saying, man, I just, I just want him all tripped up and confused. That's what I want. So, But how are we going to do it? We've got to fall after his example, right? So, thank you, Jesus. The divine response is not always easy, but it is always right. I don't know about you, but I want to try my best to be as right as I can. Just to hear those words, well done and good and faithful servant, will be music to my ears. And I pray that we have a, a mind and a heart and a will about us while we're here to serve Him to the best of our ability. Even through the hard stuff. Right? Because that's when it shows that we're truly committed to being His disciples. And I want to be truly committed. And I trust that He gave this sermon today for all of us. For all of us to take an example and follow after that. So let's go ahead and close in prayer. <clears throat> Jesus, we thank You so much that You did come to be on our example. And that you also gave us examples through other men who followed you. Help us to truly walk in that divine response and not act in our flesh, not act in our own will, not be too prideful to admit when we've messed up, but to just rest in the fact that we're going to serve you to the best of our abilities. And I thank you for that example, and I thank you for your word, and I thank you for testing us and and showing us how we need to be, even the hard stuff. And I love you and thank you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 Amen.